in capital budgeting, we're trying to determine whether a project is worth undertaking or not. And in order to do that, we need to figure out what the cash flows from the project are. So the question we have to ask ourselves is, what are the relevant cash flows that we need to look at? Well, first we want to use the incremental cash flows. That, that is the extra cash flows from undertaking the project. Oftentimes people miscommunicate this or either intentionally or unintentionally. For example, when a city is trying to bid to host a Super Bowl or the, um, the Olympics, they'll oftentimes talk about how much money it will bring into the local area. They may talk about $2 billion coming in from all these people who will be coming for the Olympics. The problem with this is, is that they tend to just count the total cash flows rather than the incremental cash flows. For example, if we happen to have the Olympics in New York City, there's Broadway, there are a lot of shows, there are a lot of restaurants. Well, people will still be going to shows and to restaurants even if the Olympics don't come to New York City. So you have to consider that when you're doing it. For example, if normally the Broadway shows are 80% filled, and when the Olympics show up, they're 100% filled, then that means that that extra 20% we can attribute to the Olympics being here. But we don't want to count the full amount of money that's coming into Broadway because people go to Broadway even when the Olympics aren't here. In fact, people who would normally go to Broadway or eat in restaurants may choose not to because it's too crowded because the Olympics are here. So they'll choose to go some other time. So that's the first thing we want to consider. We also want to take into account the fact that cash flows that exist regardless of whether or not the project is undertaken are not relevant. So we shouldn't account for them. We shouldn't include those in our calculation. There are a couple of types of costs that we want to talk about. A sunk cost is a cost that has already been paid and has no impact on the decision to accept or reject the project. People People make this mistake all the time. Okay? We need to ignore sunk costs because we can't get them back. People do this all the time. For example, they'll be standing in line to buy concert tickets. And they'll say, well, I've been standing in line for six hours. I can't leave now. Of course you can leave now. You can't have back the six hours. Or someone who's studying finance who decides that they don't want to study, they don't want to work in the field of finance. They want to be a school teacher. They want to be a nurse. Well, it's silly to say, well, I've already gone three years of school. Let me just finish my finance degree, and then I'll go on to education. If you're never going to use that degree, then you should just move on and switch your major to teaching or nursing or whatever. The second type of cost that's important is something referred to as opportunity cost. And that's the cost incurred by foregoing the next best alternative. These need to be included when we do our cash flow analysis. For example, if you build a factory, you can't build a sports arena on the same land. Okay? And the question is, how much would, would be earned with that sports arena? So we have to look at how much more money we're making from the factory. We also need to take into account side effects. When a firm undertakes a project, does it impact other projects? For example, when Apple introduced the iPad Mini, sales of the iPad were likely to fall because there are people who aren't going to buy both. They might have bought an iPad, but now they think the Mini fits them better. Perhaps they want a smaller one for commuting purposes. They choose to buy the iPad Mini, but they're probably not going to buy both. So this is a case where one product cannibalizes some of the sales of the other product. It may also be the case that one product or one investment benefits the product. For example, when Apple introduced the iTunes Store, they did so basically because they were hoping to increase the sales of iPods because there would be more content available for the iPod. There would be a, an easy way to obtain music and to put it onto your iPod, and that made, it, made the iPod a lot more attractive. Another Thing we need to account for that's usually ignored. When we think of capital budgeting, we always think about 
long-term investments, but we also have to make investments in networking capital. Networking capital involves cash, inventories, receivables, etc., as well as the short-term uh, liabilities such as wages payable and taxes payable, etc. For example, an individual opens a, a clothing boutique. Well, they're going to have to make capital investments in a building, in, um, in shelving and, and racks to hang the clothes on, but they're also going to have to make an investment in networking capital to provide an inventory of clothes. They may also need to provide credit to their customers which is also an investment in networking capital. Finally, there are things referred to as financing costs. What does it cost us to finance this project? These are not going to be included in our cash flows. These are going to be accounted for elsewhere. So these we want to ignore when we're evaluating or determining the relevant cash flows uh, of our project. Let's take a look at an example here. What are the relevant cash flows for a replacement decision. So a company is trying to decide if they should replace that truck or replace that computer system or that air conditioning system. Well, first you have to look at the initial investment. And the initial investment is going to equal the initial investment to acquire the new asset minus the uh, after-tax inflows from liquidation of the old asset. You may be able to sell the old asset, sell the old truck. Okay? If you've ever purchased a car and traded in your old car, what do you think about? You don't think about the total cost of the car. You may trade, you may buy a car for twenty thousand, but your old car may get you uh, five or six thousand dollars on a trade-in, and that reduces the initial investment. The operating cash inflows. We have to look at the operating cash inflows from the new asset minus what operating cash inflows we had from the old asset. So we can't just we can't just uh, start with these new cash flows and say, well, we have, we have $100,000 in cash flows. If the previous project had $80,000 in cash flows, we have to subtract that out. Finally, we'll have a terminal cash flow when we ditch the asset. Well, when we sell off the new asset, okay, you're going to have some after-tax cash flows from the termination of the new asset but you're also going to lose the after-tax cash flows from the termination of the old asset. So again, we need to account for these when we're looking at the relevant cash flows in order to conduct capital budget, okay, to do a net present value or an internal rate of return analysis.